All right, so we're back in town and we are being awarded an instant of our choice. Oh, we do have Abrupt Decay. Awesome. That's what I wanted. So we got another Abrupt Decay I can put in my deck. Uh, actually, the first one. This is a super powerful instant. Um, can't be countered by spells or abilities. Destroy target 9 lane permanent. Converted mana cost 3 or less. I mean, this is great. I'd be able to use it for something in almost every game. We have one black amulet. I could try to use that to buy an instant. Maybe I can get a dark rich. Let's try that. Yep, okay. Works for me. Cool. All right, where were we? There's the Black Castle. That's good for reference. Let's see if we can move down here this way. Man, these witches are all over me. Yeah, all right. Not much I can do here yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Do I want to trade creatures here? Yeah, let's try and do that. And that had regenerate. Was not paying attention. That will stop me from taking three damage. And I think... Yep, okay. Okay. I need land. Let's see if I can get a creature out here. Yeah, let's... Okay. Wither and Persist, super useful on that. Or I can get this 3-3 creature out. Or Blister Grub with Swamp Walk will be good. Let's go for maximum power and toughness here. Uh huh. So he's got a Navinural's Disc that he can use to destroy all creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. Of course, then he can combo that with the Regenerate here. And that regenerates too, so that's the theme of his deck he's got going on here. Where he can destroy all my stuff and regenerate his. The way the AI in this works, it's probably going to go and use this if I have even one creature in play next turn. He's got zero cards in his hand. So I have major card advantage. He's got land advantage and creature advantage. So I could put out my Rend Claw Trow, block with that, and that's going to reduce this. Well, if he destroys it with uh, Navindril's Disc, and then it's going to come back, regenerate at full health without the counters. Or I could put out Golgari Germination. So that when he does kill this, I'm at least going to have a blocker. Let's do that. Let's see what happens with this. And... So I'm either going to block and stop myself from taking damage next turn, or I can send this creature through. He doesn't have enough mana to regenerate anything right now. I think he would just let it go through, take him down to 8. But then I'm going to take 3 damage, so it's sort of an even trade. I'd rather hold on to my life. Oh, okay, he destroyed it outright before he even attacked. 
kind of surprised by that, because it's going to tap his creatures when they regenerate. So he won't be able to attack with them. Okay. That wasn't actually that bad. And now, let's get this card out here. So I can block with that. It's going to reduce the power and toughness of this creature. I could kill it outright with Desert, but he's just going to regenerate. So we'll block here. That becomes a 1-1. One, one. And I get my Trow back, since it has Persist. Let's get this grub out so I can start hitting him for two every turn. Since that does have swamp walk. Ah. Again, I need to read the cards. I didn't realize this causes him to have to bounce a creature to his hand every turn. So I'm going to destroy this with desert. Uh-huh. Excellent. Okay. Let's get Obnixilis out. Hit him for two. Block with the trow. I think I'm going to him him <laughs> to get that card out of his hand because I don't want any surprises here. And then I'll do Rush of Vitality on Obnixilis so I can gain four life. Let's do that. On her, I should be saying. Oh, Terror. Wouldn't have... Uh... Well, if I played a green creature, yeah. So that was worth doing. Alright, and let's see. So, you can't block this. Send these through. He is blocking, and just going to regenerate that. Gain four life. Oh, he has a trow. She has a trow of her own. Desert that creature. Take two damage. Not bad. Artifact or enchantment. None of these are artifact creatures. So I've got a 2-2 two, two, and a 3-3. Three, three. If I draw a land, that's going to be really useful. In fact, if I can do enough damage to get him down to 3 life, then I basically win if I draw a land as long as I keep that creature. So let's attack with both of these. Nice! Okay. And, in fact, if Blister Grub dies at this point he will lose instantaneously. Kill that with desert. And then, do I want to block here or just take two damage? Let's just take two. There we go. Dead. <clears throat> That's a rare. I can probably sell that. I don't think I want to use that card in my deck. Thank you for the gold. 
see what's down on this side of the map. We need to make sure we're collecting world magic spells and mana links. Expert green amulet. Oh, there was a card I wanted to take out of here. Yeah, we do not need Zun Yu. Goodbye. Apothecary Initiate. One drop. Player casts a white spell. You may pay one. If you do, gain one life. Ah, he's like an ivory cup on the go. Cup of ivory? Ivory cup. Two and Hexproof Reach. Need two green mana. Blister Grub. Alright. Need more mana. Matenda Herder. Another one drop from Mirage. One one flanking. All right, it's Grub versus Herder time. So this has kind of like an inverse fear ability where it usually fear is can't be blocked except by black creatures or artifact creatures. This is the same except white. This is a human and has trample. This is not a human. <laughs> This is the grub. Uh, all right, elf rogue, skulking ghost. Could use that to gain some life. Two, three death touch. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Okay. So I'm gonna end up taking two every turn from that. I'm gonna attack with blister grub, just trade some creatures. I think I'm gonna do this, and then next turn I'll drop that on it to get a big creature going and with the elixir of immortality i'll have enough life i can take some hits from this without losing he's probably not going to block i think oh wasn't expecting that that was a foolish move he lost his uh unblockable creature oh the rhinos doubles the amount of life gained whenever he gains life look at that Pretty cool combo going there already. So anytime he plays a white spell, pay one mana, gain two life. So we need to take him out quickly before he can gain a whole bunch of life and get way out ahead of me. Five, six, death touch. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Extremely overcosted ability from uh, Fallen Empires. Don't see much play with this card. Hexproof and Reach. He can only do three damage per turn. If I attack with this, that's going to die. Flying. Useful. Mm, can't really block with that. Let's get this Mammoth out and my Elixir. 1-1 one, one flying, not a big deal. So he's not even attacking now. To attack with this, he can kill that, but I'd take out three of his creatures in the process, which would be a good trade. Let's just see what happens here. Blocked three creatures with the death touch creature. Okay, so he's gonna gain ooh, four life from that. If I get to take out three of his creatures. And Hmm. 
Let's get this blocker out. And I'll hit my elixir. Okay, so if he blocks with this, he's going to gain two life. Not a big deal. I'm going to attack with everything. Worst thing he does is kill one creature, and I'll get one of his. That's what he's doing. So we'll just do three damage to this. Hit him for eight. <clears throat> he gains two. Back up to 14. No cards in his hand. Uh, not super concerned at the moment. Let's just get this flyer out. And I'll hold back one creature in case he has a board wipe. That's a useful ability. Tap all creatures, target player controls. That can be a game winner. If you get into the late game long enough to have eight mana sitting around. Let's attack with everything here. And let's get this in play, see if that holds him off from attacking, since that can do enough damage to kill his Rhino. Yeah. I'm going to hold back Serpent Warrior. There we go. That's not going to be enough to keep you alive. There we go. Nice multicolor land there. Um, probably still not planning on splashing white. South the Unicorn's Hold, we get a black amulet. Yeah, you know what, it's right down there. I need to go that way anyway. Let's go into this thing. Another priestess here with the uh, walls deck, defender deck. Her deck is kind of slow. Which, having this null champion out is going to be really cool because then I can get that powered up fully. Uh, not yet, though, because I don't have any mana. Yes. Oh, she's got a circle of protection black. That could be an issue. Anytime I deal damage to her with the black source, she can just pay one mana to prevent it completely. That could be a problem. Can't really get that through at the moment anyway, so I'm just going to gain some life. Defender for a strike. Uh, Alright, see if he blocks. Nope, oh, okay. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, it became a target of uh, Speller ability. Yep, that's what happened. He had that uh, Gossamer effect, and I didn't count on that being able to actually destroy that creature. That's why that creature is a 3-3 for only 3 mana. Because it dies so easily if it's targeted. Um, target unblocked creature. Yeah, well played. All right. Let's see if we can get this brain weevil through. Get her to discard some cards. A serpent warrior. She can use this again, but that's not going to bounce the creature to my hand. I think I'd, yeah, let's send that through because if they replay that, 
then that's like their whole turns. They only have two mana. Yep. So that kept them from putting anything else out. Uh huh. So I could put out Golgari Germination, send the Brain Weevil through. Oh, it doesn't even have to be attacking unblocked. I was thinking this was more like um, Dothy Mind Ripper, I think it is, where you. No, not. Was it Mind Ripper from Tempest? You you attack, and if it's unblocked, you sacrifice that the person discards like three cards. This one I can just sacrifice right now. Uh, although I could send it through, deal one damage, since it cannot be blocked. And if I play Golgari Germination first, I'll get an extra 1-1 one, one back. Let's, let's do that. Ori power up Null Champion. Got too many options. Let, let's just do this. Yeah. Attack with both of these. Not using Gossamer Chains this time. Oh, yes, there it goes. Okay, now Priestess discards two cards. Fortified area. And something completely useless. Another wall of hope out. That circle of protection black is still going to be a problem. Um, here, I can do three mana on this and then play Skulking Ghost too. Unless it taps the wrong mana to, to do that. You be careful sometimes playing this game with the auto-tapping. See, this costs three colorless mana. And it tapped all my swamps to do that. So now I don't have mana to play this card. Uh-huh. I can still attack, though. I'm going to send these through. So I managed to do three damage. That's still pretty good. Now her walls can attack. Granted, <laughs> I don't think the 0-3 walls are much of a concern at this point. So this is a 1-3 first strike creature now. Let's level this up again. I just made the same mistake twice. And let's attack both of these. There we go. Attack with all three of these. Let's see what happens. So Gossamer Chains on my Null Champion. It loses all of its level ups. Destroyed a Wall of Hope and did a little bit of damage there. She's still real short on mana. Oh, it didn't bounce my... Uh... Oh, that's right. Okay. That just prevented the damage. The Gossamer... And then that bounces. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I could make that a 7 3. Or I could use this to gain some life. Mm. It's 3 mana. I can hold on to 2 and then play Rush of Vitality. Yeah, let's do that. Tap these manually. Level up. 7-3 now. And this will... What's probably going to happen... Well, it doesn't matter because I can do enough damage here. Anyway, to win, I think. She's probably going to gain some life due to Wall of Hope. No, there are no more Walls of Hope. Okay, those are gone. Gain some life. Do some damage and enough damage to win the duel. There we go. Not anything I'm really looking for here. 
Dungeon Clues, Black Vice, Soul Ring, Time Twister. The original version of this game had a glitch where Black Vice would hit twice, and that's prior to any of these uh, updates having been made to the game, but you could just drop Black Vice and it would just instantly destroy everything. Uh, I have a red amulet. I could get common creature of either green or black. But once I do this, then it'll give me a quest that I can complete to get any creature I want. Let's do that. Let's see if I can find a, a common here that I might want to put in my deck. Okay. I think I'm just going to go with another uh, Renclaw Trow, since it's a common creature, black and green. And um, that'll fit nicely into this deck. There we go. For one amulet. A little land heavy, so we can take that out. 64 black, 36% green. Mana sources matches pretty well. Yeah. All right, what's on our map? Tome of Enlightenment over to the left, or west as they call it. Let's see what the challenge is here. Oh, they didn't give us one. Mm. Okay. So much for that one. I don't want to do it. Ah! <laughs> Stay away from me. Powerful uh, summoner creature. That's like the um, Black Wizard sends Undead Knight to attack Cold Snap Forge. I need to go to Unicorn's Hold. Oh, no. Oh. I don't even get anything if I win. 20 life to my 12. Not cool. One land starting out. Not cool. No land. Shoot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. You see why I was trying to avoid dueling this creature? Look at this. Acidic Slime, 2-2 two, two Death Touch. He's already got 5 mana out to cast this. I have 1 land and nothing else. Black Lotus, Cyclone. Life Gift, so he's gaining life whenever a land comes into play. More life gain. Soul Ring, Black Lotus. Ancient Tomb. <laughs> uh, well, do we have a chance here? I'll waste those next turn and see what happens here. Oh, check that out. So Cyclone does one does X amount of damage every turn, and then every turn he gains that much from Sun Droplet. That's a cool combo. I can't even cast Abrupt Decay on that because of the mana cost. Uh, let's get rid of his Sun Droplet then. Okay. Get my Trow out, my newly acquired Trow. Wow. Okay, so he just cast Genesis Wave. Reveal X cards from the top of your library. Put any number of permanent cards that converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. So he just played a whole bunch of stuff for free. Got privileged, posi privileged position. Other permanents you control have Hexproof, which is nuts. Still has Cyclone in play. Enchantress's Presence. 
Casting an enchantment spell, draw a card. He is totally played out. Like, all of his cards are in play. He's got nothing in his hand. Uh, this is protecting me for the moment. Five life to his 28. Okay. Okay, and as this sometimes happens, I promise I didn't do this on purpose. Because uh, I was definitely about to lose that duel, but the game crashed. I don't know why exactly. Uh, this sometimes happens with Chandelier. Uh, I might have to take a look at that deck and see if there's something weird in there. Well, I'm going to have to duel him again. <laughs> I didn't even get out of the duel with the game crash. Let me take one more shot at this. And then we will likely conclude the video. Hopefully we can conclude it here with a victory. But a little bit of an early lead. I don't think it's going to last. He's got a card draw engine here. He's got a wasteland. Uh, he's probably going to use that to destroy my desert, but I can't really do much about that. Yeah, Brain Weevil. Yep. Took him out my desert. Wait, what? Oh, he tapped that for mana. Okay, then he acidic slimed my swamp. So I've got Death Raid Shaman. You can exile a land card from a graveyard to get mana of any color. I need five for Obnixilis. I only have green mana. Let's do this first. Drop two cards there. Oh, I got his Library of Alexandria. And Life Gift. Okay, that helped. Death Rich Shaman. Exile an instant. Opponent loses two life. Exile a creature. I gain two life. This, I need black mana to level up. So the best I could do right now is trade creatures there. It does have death touch. Let's do it. I want to see what happens. Okay, he is trading creatures. I'm going to wait till his turn to see what happens and probably use my elixir. Okay. Yeah, Wasteland to destroy my desert. I was expecting that. It's got Cyclone out again. Getting some life. We do have life advantage. I can't really do much to him, but we do have life advantage. Now Cyclone... ...isn't really going to work in his favor, since I have a life advantage here. So I could... Uh, remove a land card from a graveyard to get another mana out of any color. So I could potentially play and I need land. Okay, and that's dead now. Oh, that was not good. Well, he might cyclone himself to death. I'm not exactly sure. Nope. Okay, he sacrificed that. He's only got one life, <laughs> and I only have one mana. It's unfair. Did he just play Cyclone again? You'd be kidding. Oh, he sacrificed both of them. Okay. But he did not account for there being a 2-1 flyer. I think we just won. Yeah! Alright. Nicely done. Alright, well, we go out on a victory. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, next time, we're going to go to Unicorn's Hold to meet with a unicorn who has promised us, or we've been told, 
So we've been told that a unicorn is waiting there to give us a black amulet. How a unicorn got a black amulet? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.